So I just like the sound of it. He's a, he's a great musician. Here we go. So. <laughs> So that was um, uh, Celso Machado's um, uh, De Poix de Anos, and maybe I'll say a couple of things here about that. Um, this Brazilian in flavor, so it has its own clave. Um, I won't go into that in any great depth. Maybe I'll just say a couple of things melodically, especially on the way out. For example, the last chord, it clearly had a plus 11 in it. <laughs> So a D sharp, or I'm sorry, a D triad works over the uh, the root of C. That's the root, but if you superimpose a D major triad, you flush out that plus four, which is, that's, that's in his voicing. So it's actually a very nice sound. And the other thing that he was doing on the way out there, um, although the ch there were a lot of changes throughout the tune, and I, and I probably didn't catch all of them, 
but it's interesting how much I can do, once again, without knowing exactly what I'm doing. Um, at the end, he was just vamping on what I clearly hear was a C uh, chord and a D flat chord, um, which is a tritone substitution. And there's certain scales that go with that. But what I want to draw your attention to, maybe just as a couple of idiomatic points, because whenever you're, you're playing, uh, you want to be mindful of the idiom you're playing. And in this, there are a couple of things that uh, I'll just mention. One is melodic. For example, um, often in this type of tune, the sixth and the ninth are very nice notes as opposed to playing the bottom end of the chord. In addition, there's, uh, in a, uh, the, the underlying bossa nova is samba. That's where bossa nova comes from. And the, the samba is, there's a very typical pattern on the pandero. Um, and sometimes if you uh, mimic some of these rhythmic uh, features of the music, it can be kind of groovy, even if the pandero's not there. Um, so, for example, I'll just play a little bit on the way out of the tune over that, uh, I hope I can just catch the, that vamp that he's doing, which is on a C chord and a D flat chord, which is a, you know, just a tritone substitute. And I'm just going to try and emphasize the ninth and the sixth and maybe introduce some pandero patterns. And notice how sparse and how uh, groovy it is. And it's also in keeping with the style of the piece. So, we just find our way back here. Where is it? I think he's joining now.